Hello, hello! How is everybody? You're here to simp for your college roommate's wife's husband. Couldn't you just cut that off at college roommates? The other two kind of repetitive, right? I mean, either or. How's it going, Fido? Yes? Okay. <laughs> How are you doing today? Yes, more coffee chill. I'm happy. Hmm. Thought there was more stuff in the drawer, drawer yesterday. Am I misremembering things? Uh, I think there was something I was supposed to give away. Let's see. All the ingredients are stocked up. And the weather's keeping quiet. It's like a good night to listen to some stories. Uh, I guess I could do that. I, I forget about the stories. Hey, look, it's Gala! I'll get to you in just a second, Gala. Oh, and hide! Woo! I don't... I, this is a lot to just read. Sorry. This is probably something I'd read if I had, like... If I wanted to get all the lore. How's it going, Gala? Hide. You guys good? Good evening, Mr. Hyde, Mr. Gala. Nice to see you too. How did it go at the hospital today? Well, it was fine, except I was a little exhausted. Uh oh. Goodness, are you having issues with the children again? No, that's not it. It's just. Well, for starters, my fury is giving me a hard time. Your fury? Is it the full moon already? Nope. Oh. But I sometimes get pre-fury symptoms. Pre-fury symptoms? Yeah, it's a common thing for werewolves. You're okay? That's good! You getting enough sleep? How's the family? A few days before the full moon, our bodies start to prepare for fury. And that changes the way they react to pretty much everything. Symptoms to vary depending on who you ask. But it can affect our muscles, our appetite, our energy levels. It can give us headaches and a lot of other stuff. Small, but annoying. That doesn't sound pleasant. No, to be honest, it's not great. For me, I've been feeling pretty sore and more tired than usual. And a bit crankier as well. Been a single dad for a few days? Kids are exhausting, let's sigh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Are the kids having fun, though? Full of energy? They always are. <laughs> Hi, do you got something to say, bud? Hmm? Is there a drink I could help you with that? Never found one, but if anyone can come up with it, it's you, Nixie. Since a Galahad can soothe your, fur uh, can soothe your fury, maybe it would work on pre-fury as well? Maybe, but I think it'd need to be more relaxing. Like a Galahad, but with no caffeine and maybe blue. <laughs> no caffeine, but it needs to be blue. They really wanted you to use this type of, uh, use the blue pea. I can't remember what's in a Galahad. Tea, milk, and ginger. So no tea. So we'd want blue, milk, ginger. My god, I wish I had some of their energy. <laughs> I feel that. Oh, I'll call a tea. He's got a wolf on it. They're so cute. I love it. Uh, do I have a thing to give? Do I have a thing to give? No, it is empty. I have nothing I have to remember. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's give Gala his tea. Here you go. I got a tea for you. Do you come up with these names on the spot, Nixie? Uh, no, it takes a bit of soul searching to tailor it to the situation and so on. That almost makes it sound like you know in advance what we're gonna order. Call it a sixth sense. Right, let's see how your sixth sense tastes. Wow, this is excellent, exactly what I needed. Very happy to hear that. Hyde, are you good? You have not said a thing. What's with the long looks, you two? Did something happen? Actually, Nixie, guess I'll just have to come out with it. I need your help. My help? Oh, come on. I wasn't that bad. No, I was tired. So tired today, I nearly fell asleep on the job. <sighs> but most importantly, it's not good for you. Moping around, sulking, refusing to look at solutions. I've never seen you like this, and I'm getting worried. There's nothing to worry about. 
You say that, but when you spend entire nights looking miserable, no advice I come up with is good enough. And Hyde, I'm barely keeping it together as it is. You should know by now how I feel when Fury's about to hit. Uh, I take it you two ended up chatting yesterday after all. You bet we did. After I walked out of here, I headed home and found this one, lying on the sofa, staring at the ceiling. Looking so gloomy it sucked the color out of the room. And it's not the first time either. It's a constant these days. Please help me help him, Nixie. I'm at my wit's end. Mr. Hyde? <sighs> Fine. Truth is, I'm bored to death. Or I would be if it wasn't for the whole immortality thing. I'm nearing 40 years old, and I've never seen been this bored in my entire life. Interesting. You usually make it sound like you're much older. 40 years old in vampire years. I'm not saying how old that is in another species' years. Eyes on the prize, Nixie. Intervention first, gossip later. My apologies. Why are you so bored, Mr. Hyde? My job. What is... What, what was that? My job. Hey, no need to shout. I'm so irritated about it, okay? I'm not exactly used to sitting around twiddling my thumbs, but modeling stopped being fun ages ago. You did mention something like that last time. You are trying to leave modeling behind, then. Yeah. Is there a specific reason for that? It's also just so brief. Okay. Back when I started modeling, people thought of fashion in a different way. They wanted to keep their outfits for a while. So they they had to be elegant, well-made, and versatile. Some campaigns I, that I featured in stayed on billboards for months. And I knew the clothes would last decades. In a way, it felt like I was building a bond with their wearers. I endorsed something that would feature in their cherished memories. But then social media came, and it all became disposable. The clothes themselves, of course, but the models even more. I shoot a campaign and the brand posts it online and it gets attention for what, 10 minutes? Then another campaign comes in and everything's forgotten. Blink and it's gone. There's no bond to be built there. Isn't that changing these days though? With slow fashioning and the like? That's true, the people are getting into vintage clothes too. I salute that. But the reality of my job remains the same. What about your fans? You have so many people following you. You mentioned that last night, and my answer hasn't changed. They follow me because they think I'm pretty. Being admired is nice, but it doesn't constitute a bond. So are you saying that you'd like to leave more of a mark? Maybe so. It would be nice if I did something that people remembered, that became a part of their lives in a real way. You do know you have people in your life in a real way, right? People who always remember you. That's not the same thing. Maybe you should study to become a doctor or something. That would make a real difference. No, thank you. The job still needs to be fun. Studying for 10 years just to exhaust myself in a 14 hour shifts? Did you mistake me for a hard working vampire? Do you see, that? Do you see what I'm dealing with, Nixie? It does seem to be a thorny issue. Perhaps you'd like to mull over it with a drink in hand, Mr. Hyde? Yes, that sounds nice. Just make me something I like. Anything, you, anything you've anything you seen me enjoy recently, or when we first met. Alright. I think I did finally figure out what the blood thing you liked was. Was it this? I think it is this one. I'm gonna look. Oh no, there's also the Zobo. Crud, I don't know which one it is. The Zobo is hibiscus ginger ginger. An invigorating ginger kick supported by cloves and pineapple. Okay. What's this one? Steeped with roasted ginger and a touch of honey. Perfect for rainy evenings. I think it's the Zobo. I think it was the Zobo. Let's see if I got it. 
There you go, Mr. Hyde. You seem like this well enough. <laughs> nice, Nixie. And you lost your bet, Hyde. A bet? When Hyde was wallowing in self-pity yesterday, I told him many people cared about him. And I bet you could remember what he liked, even if he gave you no instructions. So now I get to say that I was right. And Hyde gets to buy me dinner. <laughs> Good on you, Gala. <laughs> At a place of my choosing. You're going to pick that horrible steakhouse again, aren't you? You know it. Have you won other bets in the past, Mr. Gala? Let's see. You say it, Mr. Hyde. You say it, Hyde. He's won every single one of the bets we've ever made. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm this close to being able to buy a new TV with the money I'm saving on food. That's great. Gala playing 4D chess over here. <laughs> I'm glad I got it right though, if they made a bet on it and Hyde was like wallowing in self pity being like, people don't care about me. I'd be like, ha, I remembered your drink. Take that. <laughs> Damn man, go to Vegas with that kind of luck. I think it's less luck on Gala's front and more just observation. Just rub it in my face, why don't you? Oh, hi, everyone. Hey, Lua. Hey, Lua. Busy night, I see. Hi, Miss Lua. Busy and lively, just the way we like it. That's good. And I'm really glad you're here, Hyde. I wanted to apologize for the other night. I was so excited to see you, especially since it'd been a while. But we ended up fighting with Bailey's in <laughs> instead. You must be getting bored of our arguments. It's alright. They're kind of fun to watch. <laughs> Why? How are things with you two, by the way? <sighs> Just let me order before I answer. If that's alright, Dixie. Of course! What, should I, what would you like? I spent the whole day talking in meetings and presentations. So I have a bit of a sore throat. Is there anything you can re recommend for that? Definitely something with lemon and honey. Sounds pretty- sounds great. I'd love a lemon and honey drink then, please. Um, I think we literally had one that's good for that. Uh... Let me see if I can find it. Oh, I thought I had one. I was pretty sure that there was a... No, that just has lemon. It'd have to be something with honey. Honey! Honey! This is all the main ingredients, isn't it? Yeah. No, ginger honey. Lemon and honey is what I'm looking for. Lemon. Lemon and honey. Okay, so let's use my brain. What would green tea, lemon, and honey taste like? I can't even imagine that. Um, let's try hibiscus, lemon, and honey. Just for fun. Khakis? Oh. I ain't gonna lie about free entertainment. No, there's gonna, there's gotta be a special drink. There's gotta be a special drink. Do I, have I even made anything with lemon and honey? Like both lemon and honey. Lemon and cinnamon. Probably got a tea base? Okay. Well, I just did... Okay. Well, I mean, the hibiscus is tea. I just made it hibiscus because she's pink and I thought it was adorable. Anyway. <laughs> I ain't about to lie about free entertainment. Hyde doesn't lie about shit. Like, Hi if Hyde will give you the most real answers you ever needed. If you have really wanted him to answer you in a very honest manner, you can guarantee that Hyde will tell you. 
and not sugarcoat it in the least. And I love it. <laughs> Good for the throat, tea based. I don't know which tea. Fido's being Fido again. Lemon and honey. I'm gonna keep doing lemon and honey because that's the order they said it in. I might be wrong going with that assumption, but yeah. Let's go with tea, lemon, and honey. Ah, I bet you that's it. Midsummer Night Dream. That looks awesome. <laughs> How about this? Here you go. Some honey to soothe, some lemon to boost recovery. Thanks, Dr. Nixie. <laughs> this is truly lovely. Just what I needed. It's great to hear. My company's trying to get a big contract, so I've been organizing meetings with everyone, making sure it's all going according to plan. It sounds pretty tough. Yeah, it's a lot of responsibilities and decision making. And part of me likes that, but part of me feels the pressure of it. So it's nice to be able to unwind with a warm cup. Anyhow, to answer your early question, Gala, you've probably gathered that Faye and I have been fighting. Yeah, and Hyde told me a little bit about it too. Right, well, we haven't discussed the wedding for the past couple of days, and honestly, it's done me a lot of good. The thing is, I know Bay means well. He's suggested all these things that he thinks I'd like, and I should like them. He's paying attention, not just sending random ideas. I should be grateful that he's trying to please me. But I get annoyed instead. And then I start feeling guilty that I'm annoyed. Which makes me even more annoyed. It's not great, I know. Well, it'd be easier if we always acted rationally. If we only get annoyed at the right, at the right people for the right reasons. But things aren't that simple, are they? That's true. Although I guess if you figured out what actually annoys you, it would help. That's the problem, I'm not sure. At first I thought I was tired or worried. The decision making at my job is taking its toll for sure. It's a bit hard for me to also deal with organizing things from in my personal life. Also the financial side of it is hard to navigate. I don't want by it. I keep tripping over it when she uses his, uh, his nickname. I don't want Bay to spend too much money, but he's right, at it he's right that involving my family comes with strings attached. I'm not sure how to avoid that, though. But I'm realizing that I might not even be the that might not even be the main issue. The more he sends me links to venues and caterers, the more it all feels wrong to me. Uh oh. I don't mean the wedding itself. I want to get married to Bay. But the way we're planning it, I don't know. I've been to my friends' weddings before. I've also been browsing the most popular wedding pictures online. There are always these big parties, very put together, very classy. They have their whole families over, their friends and colleagues. They rent out these beautiful barns and they hire live bands. They wear designer dresses and bespoke suits. I used to look at that and think, this is great, this is what I want. But now it all just feels more and more off to me. Why don't you tell your fiancé that? What if he thinks I'm getting cold feet? Or that I'm questioning his ability to help me with the budget? It's up to how you communicate it, isn't it? Right, but it's still a difficult topic. We've been through so much, you know all that. This is supposed to be our special day, a way to celebrate our partnership. Bay wants to honor that. He feels awful if he thinks I don't. Or if he thinks I don't trust him. I swear, you and your elf are, s are well matched. You always worry so much about what the other thinks, instead of working on your own wants and needs. Do you realize that's the important bit, right? I mean, generally, yes, I get that, but how does it apply here? What do you think it means to honor your partnership? To celebrate it properly, for starters. Right? And who are you in that partnership with? I believe you met him, the blonde guy with the puppy eyes? Right, I'm glad you remember that, because you were making it sound like you're in a relationship with your friend who got married, and the strangers who put the wedding pictures online. Hyde's got a point! <laughs> Every time Hyde opens his mouth, it's followed by... He got point, though. <laughs> This is your relationship you're celebrating. Why are you so concerned with other people's weddings? 
Your special day needs to be sense make sense to the two of you. I have it in a trainer. I have it in a trainer's at fast food joint if that's what you like. The way you can also take the budget. That way you can also take the budget out of the equation. A simpler wedding won't feel shabby if you make it feel properly yours. Um, I still want a pretty outfit and a decent food. <laughs> Thank goodness. But point taken. It's just my family might have certain expectations. Did they openly say that? No. Then maybe they do. Or maybe you just think they do. The only way to find out is to talk to them. Besides, isn't Bailey's also about to become your family? You sure are, you sure are the only family he's got. I'm not saying to, to disinvite everyone or to fight with them or anything. But you shouldn't put their needs above your own. I really shouldn't, should I? You've given me food for thought. Thanks, Hyde. My pleasure. Woo! Go Hyde! <laughs> Hyde has centuries of life experience, he's gonna have some wisdom. For real. <laughs> Whatever 40 vampire years is. <laughs> Amazing how you perk up when you give people advice, Hyde. Maybe you should become a therapist. He probably freaking should. Hum. Him. You probably should. <laughs> I think he should. He'll give it to you straight! <laughs> Gee, thanks for the vote of confidence. I did say I might become a couples counselor. But I agree with what you've all implied. I don't think I'm quite tactful enough for that. No, you don't need tact! People need the brutal truth! <laughs> they wouldn't come to you if they didn't. Are you looking to change careers, Ty? He's bored of modeling. Finds it too impertinent. Wants to leave a mark. Wants to have fun. Just very quick summary. Oh, I see. Well, is there any way you can make modeling fun again? I don't think so. Last time I had proper fun was maybe 20 years ago. What happened then? I was modeling a capsule collection for a young designer. And she wanted to take her own pictures. She got a studio, lugged the outfits out, lugged the outfits there, found someone to do the makeup. And then she whipped out an old film camera, a proper derelict. Hadn't seen one like it in the, since the 60s. My granddad has an old black and silver camera with two lenses. Was it something like that? Yep, exactly like that. She said she preferred it because of the way it captured the light. And also because it was slower, a slower experience. Something that would allow us to connect more. At first, I didn't think of it much. I started doing the usual posing, switching, posing some more. But something felt different. Then I realized what it was. Most of the time, we were just talking. She only took a picture once in a few, once in a few minutes at that. Is that unusual? Yep, most fashion photographers take dozens of pictures in a row. Felt like a bit, I felt a bit sorry for her, to be honest. Thought she didn't know what she was doing and that she was wasting her money. But we had a great time and we kind of got friendly, I guess. Because at the end of it, she let me use up the remaining exposures. I fooled around, shot some random stuff, and one portrait of her. Then she suggested I come with her to the dark room. Watch how she developed the pictures and how they came out. You did always have a fondness for dark places. <laughs> Comes with the territory. But as for the pictures, well, they were gorgeous. First of all, I looked really like me, you know? Uh, me I could recognize. But that's not even what stuck with me the most. It's the care she put into processing each frame. Working each picture through the chemical baths, hanging them, drying them. It was like watching a magic ritual. In her portrait, when she saw it, she got a bit emotional. She said she was used to being the other side of a camera. She was used to being on the other side of a camera. And it was the first time she really liked the portrait of someone someone took of her. I'm in a weird place these days. It's not like me to tell, a, tell these kinds of tales. Or to launch into soppy monologues, really. Just forget it. No, I think it was a beautiful story. And it gives me an idea, I think, of another career for you. Please share, Lua. You'd be doing us both a solid. 
Go on then. Well, maybe it's because I've looked so many I've looked at so many of them recently. But apparently film is making a big comeback for wedding pictures. It's what she said. It captures the light beautifully. And it's more personal, slower approach. Maybe you could try that. Who me? No, the other vampire who's looking for a new line of work. <laughs> I love Gala. Gala's great. I think you've got the wrong guy here, Lua. I know I'm disgustingly sentimental these days, but I'm not that far gone. Attending one wedding gives me cavities, let alone several per month. Eh, well, forget about it then. No, no, no. Don't forget about it at all. I would be perfect for you. Come on, Hyde. I know you like to play strong and sarcastic, but you are sentimental. And you love to chat up people up. You'd solve all the bridesmaids' drama and offend the parents. But most importantly, you'd do something for these people that I'll never forget. They'll look at your pics more their top their whole lives. If that's not if that's not leaving a mark, I don't know what is. He's got a point. You're assuming they don't get they won't get divorced. I don't know if this is the right topic for Miss Lua. It's all right. I know some marriages end in divorce, but that doesn't change anything, does it? Whether a marriage lasts for a few months or several decades. Wedding is still an unforgettable moment in someone's life. My career in the Mafia is really looking up. You're hopeless. I'm falling asleep in my chair now, so I'm gonna head back. Do whatever you want, you thick scold vampire. Just don't stay out too late, okay? Yeah. Alright. That's my cue as well. I have some thinking to do. And maybe some talking. Thanks again, Hyde. And good luck. I hope your next adventure is a good one. It will be. Good night, Lua. Good night, Nixie. See you later. Good night, you two. You hanging around, Hyde? <clears throat> Here we go again. Last one sitting. Indeed, proper night owls. You didn't say anything about the wedding photographer idea. It's ridiculous, right? That's not for me to say, but I wouldn't call it ridiculous. It sounds like you enjoyed the whole film photography experience. And you do like being around people, don't you? I do, sometimes. But I'm not a romantic. People get married, they think they're taking a first step into forever. Well, there's no such thing as forever. Everyone ends up disappointed in some way, and then... Next thing you know, no, I don't want to sound too depressing. So you don't believe in love? Of course I do, but only in a certain kind. You can choose to keep supporting someone to enjoy their company. You can do that for years with friends, family, lovers. But at the end of the day, you're still you, a separate person. And they're still them. There's two souls becoming one, not really. I'd know. The one, I'm, the one time I tried, it really didn't work out. But do you regret trying? Boom! We put logic on hide! <laughs> no, I guess not. It confirmed for me that marriage and the like, it's never going to be my thing. And there's freedom in knowing about myself. It's given me space to build other relationships that work much better. But at the same time, when I see people who truly believe it, people who walk into it, Willing to share their lives so closely, even if it's even if for most of them it won't pan out. There's something beautiful there. Like watching a butterfly fly too close to a flame. Or a flower bloom like it'll ne like it'll never wilt. Well, in my case, I signed up. I singed off my wings, but I'm still here. And on that day, for a minute, when I said we'd be together forever, and meant it, I sure felt alive. If you know all that, then you must also know that it's something worth celebrating. And something worth helping other people celebrate. You're a tricksy one, Nixie. And I'm too tired to fight your logic. Which means it's time for me to head back. Of course, Mr. Hyde. And I meant to say, I appreciate our one-to-one -one chats. I hope we can keep providing you with a comfortable space here. Oh, it's plenty comfortable, for sure. Besides, well... It all boils down to this, doesn't it? 
The way time passes for me is very different from anyone else I know. Thank goodness Gala is from a long living species. But even then, he'll grow old before I do, eventually. The world will change a hundred times. Technologies will die out, new technologies will come. I'll feel... I'll feel again the way I feel now, in a century, maybe two. And the one Gala won't be around to give me advice. The world won't wait for me. But you will. Am I right, Nixie? You don't know that! <laughs> That's very perceptive of you, Mr. Hyde. And yeah, you've grown to know me quite well. It's only fair that I know you a little in return. I suppose that's true. So, anyway, I'm looking forward to that. To continuing our story. It's nice to know that no matter how much time passes, there's always going to be someone here rooting for me. Thank you for your trust, Mr. Hyde. We will make sure it's not misplaced. I know you will. And on that note, I guess I'm not going to browse for some film. I guess I'm going to browse for some film cameras. What's the worst that can happen? Indeed. Take care of yourself, friend. And you as well. So does that imply that we are also a vampire? We already implied. Hang on. What are we? I don't I don't know anymore. <laughs> He's on to me, run. I don't have to, apparently. He just gets it. But we're apparently a immortal species of some sort? just implies that you're gonna live a long time. I, I'm questioning things now, I don't know. <laughs> I know that we're a time traveler, which implies that we are uh, Silver's kid, at least Silver's kid, because Silver apparently implied that uh, <clears throat> it implied that he knew us and I did go and watch uh, like the true ending if you go and fix everyone's drinks and stuff like that because you literally use your time powers to go and fix people's drinks in the first game uh, which I guess I can do in this one th this time so I don't actually like miss showing anything but uh, Silver implies that he's here to have kids so that this world will have a superhero. And apparently we're supposed to be that superhero. But we don't find that out until the end. So, I think Silver is still supposed to be our parent, but I don't know where the long life comes from. Or maybe, maybe Silver's also got a horrendous, like, long lifespan. I don't know. <laughs> The world won't wait for you, Mr. Hyde. But some of us will. I need answers! <laughs> Cough syrup. That was the one I was trying to make. But Lewis still seemed okay with the other one. That looks like green tea. I thought I did a green tea one. No, I did the hibiscus. I used regular tea when I made hers. So, okay. New image recognition tech confuses gnomes, dwarves, a review. Uh oh. <laughs> That's bad. Robot asked to give ultimate advice. Elven burnout is real. Here's how to avoid it. Like, burnout's real for everyone, man. Good evening. I'm gonna get a squat. <gasps> Georgie! How's it going? Water. Okay. Officer, welcome. Hey, Nixie. Oh, how are you doing? I, for some reason, was about to read that as, How old are you? <laughs> you don't look well. Officer? Oh. Yeah, sorry. My mind's kind of elsewhere right now. No worries. Work issues? What else? I'm all ears if you want to chat. <laughs> You're a pal. I'm in a real bind, Nixie. What happened? Well, never-ending workplace issues aside, things are getting weirder by the minute, and I'm filling out on my depth. Are you talking about your recent patrols? Yeah. I've been analyzing the CCTV footage the last couple of days. Oh, I see. How'd that go? Did the cameras manage to capture anything? 
Yes and no. The infrareds caught a couple of blurry things. They ran off, turned a corner, and disappeared. So it could have been anything, like rats or cats. But neither fits with what I heard on the scene. The footsteps, you know? The laughter? <laughs> Come to think of it, it sounded more like giggles. Giggles? Can werebeasts giggle? Not that size, no. Even if they could, it doesn't explain the footsteps, really. I see. So what's next? I've had some ideas, but they're just wild theories at this point. In short, I'm stumped. You know, Nixie, I've been racking my brain ever since Miss Riona dropped that bomb about the fairies, you see. Oh, what about them? As it turns out, fairies was an umbrella term for many types of beings. Anything that wouldn't fit the known physical rules at, t at the time was referred to as such. Oh, hmm. Does that mean banshees were part of the fairy folk? <laughs> Probably. Not anymore, though. It's an ongoing process, but the list is getting shorter. But back then, any sentient being that was re even remotely comprehensible was considered that. And that includes... Uh, apparitions. Apparitions? Yes. Apparitions, like... His face. Ghosts. 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 I see. What do you mean, I see? <laughs> eh? It doesn't sound like a bad joke to you? Uh, I'm not sure I follow. Ghosts. But come on, ghosts don't exist. Do they? Because if they do, all I can think of is that the damn about is that damn tree now. Ah, right, the tree. Does that mean it's haunted? It... it could be. Ugh. Don't get how you can be so calm about this. Huh? Uh, well? Why wouldn't I be? I mean, there have been all sorts of customers here. Some of them are so out of this world, even. Sometimes literally. <laughs> You're right. Guess you're not the one who's being weird here. Don't say that. Everyone has their own... <laughs> I just need another power outage and the Banshee to show up. That would be amazing right now. I would love that. We get to see some really fun fr uh, sprites. Uh, everyone has their own... Peccadillos? Peca what is that word? Can someone type it phonetically in chat? <laughs> True that. You don't find them telling me, though. May I ask the reason you're so afraid of ghosts? Think it's Spanish? Oh, okay. Interesting. So that double L was supposed to make a Y sound, right? Is that right? Am I remembering right? I don't remember. Gosh, no. It's a long story. Not something I'm really re I'm ready to talk about anyway. That's understandable. All you need to know is my fear was never caused by actual ghosts. Oh. Suggestion is a very powerful thing, you see. That's all I'm willing to share for now. Okay, thanks for sharing. You know, it's funny. My grandpa was very into this stuff. So is my daughter. They're like my opposites, very curious and fascinated by the unknown. Not that I'm not, mind you. It's just with my time be as a cop and all, unknown variables usually mean trouble. I see, that makes sense. They're the kind of people who would see things from nothing. I mean that in the best way possible. Like, you know the Zen Rock Garden thing from Japan? They understand the Zenness of it. I don't, but that doesn't stop me from thinking it's chill, you know? I think you almost got it. Yeah. But I'm sure he and my daughter could talk about it for hours. Too bad he passed away before she was born. Sorry to hear that. Don't be. On that note, Nixie, you've seen my lighter, right? I'd say I'm pretty well acquainted with it now, yes. Not bad. That thing was originally my grandpa's. He bought it sometime after the war ended. It was to commemorate the upcoming new era, he said. In more ways than one. 
He got honorably discharged due to a severe leg injury he never, he'd never be able to recover from. Oh. At the time, he was living right across the street from the former town hall. For obvious reasons, he couldn't walk. So it was a good location for him with all the veteran support nearby and all. Right? Now about that street. You see, my grandpa liked to chat. Never liked being alone, that guy. Plus, he pretty much hated his bleak, his bleak room. So sometimes he'd go and hang out with the street vendors in front of his place. There were all kinds of beings there, along with their pets, from all walks of life. That's why he had a lot of stories about the crazy th craziest things. Ah, I see. You see, the street's name just came to my mind last night. Can you take a guess at what it is? You mean... Orange Street, uh-huh. Wasn't a, it wasn't called that before. That's why the whole thing didn't click for me straight away. But I went through his files and checked it out. Does that mean the vendors he's talking about? Bingo. And you know what? He bought the lighter there. Wow, what a coincidence. Are you sure it's only a coincidence? What do you mean? Come on. Ain't no way they're just coincidences, Nixie. Everything is lining up too perfectly, if you ask me. Oh. Think about what's happened so far. It was just my team that found out about the vandalism before they dumped the whole case on me. Then my car was hit out of everyone's. Right? Then my luck started tanking. The broken mug, the fan, the black cat. Just tons of weird stuff happened in the past week alone, you see. Right? Then one thing led to another. My team was chosen to lead the investigation. And tell me, who's in charge of the case? Me. There's no... Then there's the Banshee Lady, your patron, with information I wouldn't have thought of. The dead tree stuff, the fairy market. Information I wouldn't even remembered on my own. Right? And now we know why I kept losing my lighter, right? How are they not connected? Tell me. Well, if you list them all in order like that... I'm telling you, Nixie, the place is calling for me. The case is... The case is made for me. But they really picked up picked the wrong guy. <laughs> Poor Georgie. I'm just real bad at dealing with spooks. They made me question everything I've ever known, you know? But I've always thought you're pretty good at handling ambu- ambu- ah, words! Ambiguity. There we go. <laughs> Not when it comes to supernatural stuff. Because we don't know enough about what's real and what's not. What will they do? Will they hurt us? Do they bring bad luck? Good luck? What's the truth? Who knows? Maybe you should take a day off and catch up on your sleep. Huh? What's that? No, nothing. You know, another patron of mine suggested a documentary to watch. Yeah? The focus was in on interesting drinks from around the world. You can find everything from the mundane to the extreme. From local comforts to really spe special stuff. And I kept thinking one particular drink might interest you. Oh? It's something like a protection drink. It's made of coffee, honey, and lemon. And a slew of other ingredients. Oh. Protection from what, though? From evil spirits and bad luck, I think. Maybe it'll ease your mind a bit. Huh, oh, gotcha. The Nixie. Even if the whole situation is uh, haunted. There shouldn't be any evil spirits, right? I don't even know, but I might need your lighter. What for? Well, the drink needs to be lit up. I just think your lighter might give it an extra magic boost it needs. Compared to just using a regular flame, I mean? <laughs> what are you gonna going to make me anyway? Nah, I trust you. Here. It exudes an interesting feel. Okay. Okay then. Okay then. Make me this magical drink you've learned, Nixie. He said coffee. Coffee, honey, and lemon. Coffee, honey, and lemon. That looks badass. Let's give Officer Georgie his... I remembered. He's getting his lighter back. It's fine. 
That looks freaking cool. Serve it. Oh, wow. The drink does light up, huh? Yep, this is special just for you. So don't tell anyone. Roger that. Here you go. Oof. Careful. Wait, was that me? I don't remember. I read the wrong way. Here you go. Oof. Be careful. Dang, Dixie. This really is something else. You sure it's okay to drink? I have no idea. But I'll take responsibility if anything happens. <laughs> Just being silly, aren't I? Sorry for bothering you with all this stuff, Nixie. You even made me this crazy drink to make me feel better. Don't say that. I'm always happy to help however I can. Thanks. Man. At least with crooks you can actually deal directly with them, you know? Not the case with apparitions. Who is this? Not with that attitude. Huh? Who are you? Who are you? Why do I have a feeling this is like an agent or something? Is it someone Georgie knows? Huh. Alright, guy. Who are you? Everything can be caught with a little elbow grease. Not actual elbow grease. I won't make that mistake again. What? McQueen? Is that you? Hello, Williams. It's been a while. <laughs> it is you. Surprise to keep. Surprises just keep coming this week. Let me go over there. Hi? You know each other? More or less. We were brunch buddies. Brunch buddies? Brunch buddies. I feel like I'm meant to say brunch buddies in the same serious tone. But I don't think... I don't like to talk about it. I still get nightmares. Athelia, I wasn't sure we were going to make it out alive. We were truly the lucky ones. Without a doubt. I'll just take both of your words for it. Good. Because I don't want to walk and talk about it. What brings you here, detective? Surely it's not the coffee. Secret police reasons. I've not read the briefing yet. But enough about me. Tell me about your supernatural problems. Yeah? You need to bust a ghost? Oh. Well, busting might be a bit much. I was just talking to Nixie about getting over my fears of this stuff. And ghosts. Something like that. I'm weak against ghostly looking stuff. I get freaked out easy. For example, I'll admit I got a little spooked by what happened on Bourne Street the other day. Ah, I remember that. <laughs> I know very well that unchecked fear leads to prejudice. That's why it's a no-no in my book. It even pains me to admit it out loud. Sometimes the toughest case to crack is ourselves. Other times, it's ghosts. I'm gonna go with that now. <laughs> I don't know why I switched to that, but I'm going with that. I don't know if he'll show up again, so I'm just gonna have fun with it. How do you do it, detective? Your cases, man. I'd have probably lost all my hair by now if I were you. I try not to think about it all that much. And when I do think about it, I think, who else will do it? Nobody. That's you. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, once you get over the dead part, they're just like you and me. Look, I remember this one case. We were investigating a haunted apartment. This lady, her husband had recently passed away, but wasn't moving on. If you get my drift. Real dead me. Couldn't take a hint. Anyway, we had to go in and exercise the place, right? But the husband, he's caught in a wind and he retreated into the basement. I won't get into the technicalities of it. But it was harder to get a ghost out of a basement or an, active, at, or an attic. It's harder to get a ghost out of a basement or an attic. It's all about the angles, really. I mean, I get it. That used to be his home. All his stuff is still there. It's hard, I get that. So, I'm slowly I'm slowly going down the stairs, trying to coax him out. BAM! Next minute all this romantic music is playing, the whole place is lit up by a spotlight. Basic sensory illusions. Classic ghost tricks. Then, before I know what hit me, I'm sitting at this pottery wheel and he's behind me and... Wait... Isn't this the plot of the nine, 1990 film Ghost? Oh. Maybe. We had a movie night at work and I dozed off before it started. The story must have slipped into my subconscious. R riveting. Oh god, there's another one! <laughs> hey, detective. Hey, people, I don't know. 
Did you get your important errand errand sorted? Sure did. Duly. I can see crumbs on your stick. Uh, crumbs stuck to your face. That's just the rain. It's very bready rain. There's filling all over your top. That's blood from a gunshot wound. It's healed up there. <laughs> what the hell is this? When did we become a cop bar? You're literally holding the receipt from the donut shop. That's why they pay you big bucks, detective. So what a miss. We're talking about getting rid of Officer Williams' fear of ghosts. Hey. Ghosts. Yeah, you're afraid of them, right, Dooley? No idea. Never met one. We stopped a ghost riot. We stopped a ghost riot. <laughs> Ghosts aren't real. So you don't need to be scared of them. Easy. There you go. I guess. Sorry that wasn't much help. Nah. What you said, they're just like that. They're just like us. That's a good thing to be reminded of. Exactly. They need to be... They used to be alive, just like us. As long as they don't try to eat, possess, violently murder you, you should be fine. Very reassuring. Just talk to them. Feel their culture. Listen to their issues. And spectral whales. Treat them like any other person. See what the, what's on the inside. Which should be easy, since you can see through them. Thought you didn't believe in ghosts. It's best not to overthink anything, he says. I certainly don't. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. I think it'll help. Ah, oh, pleasure. Now, Dooley, I think we should read that case briefing and find out why they're here. I already did. Oh. Turns out we were meant to arrest the person driving that taxi. Instead of... Instead of taking it all the way to Seattle. Yes. What? The driver was a... Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Ah! Chupacabra! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Groan. <laughs> uh. Okay, okay. Let's get out of here, Dooley. Good luck, officer. Thanks, McQueen. A lot. You too, Officer Dooley. Bye, guy. Good luck with your rat problem or whatever. Bye, coffee wizard. What the hell? Take care. I'm a coffee wizard now? That was, uh, that was quite in something. <laughs> oh, what do you know, Nixie? Looks like my good luck is back. Feeling like a million bucks now. I'm very glad you do. <laughs> anyway. Thanks anyway, Nixie. I really did nothing much. Are you gonna be okay? Okay enough to start thinking about what to do next. I'm done here for the night. You have a good evening, all right? Please keep me updated, officer, and stay safe. Will do. I love the dialogues in this game. You never know what you're gonna get. All right, then. Maybe I'll go check the stock and... Huh? Did you forget your lighter again? No, that was two rings. Oh, hey. Miss Riona, welcome. Hello. How's the traffic out there? It's a mess. There's construction work taking place on Lenora Avenue. Oof. I can imagine the gridlock already. Fortunately, I have no deliveries to make today. That's great. I'm happy you're here. So, anything I can make for you this evening? I'd like something for my throat. I would appreciate a cup of tea infused with lemon and a touch of honey. Alright. Cup of tea with lemon and honey. She wants the, uh, cough syrup. Is this the right thing? She said tea, coffee, and honey, right? Did I use the right tea? Cough syrup is green tea. But she did request specifically tea. Okay. I was making sure. A cup of warm midsummer's night's dream for you, miss. That's what we call it here. How whimsical. It 
it's wonderful. Sweet, but well balanced with lemon, and the slight bitterness of the tea completes the taste. Thank you. You're very welcome. By the way, you just missed Officer Georgie just a few seconds ago. Is that so? How is he? He's been thinking about what you said quite a bit, actually. Oh? He's currently dealing with plenty of clues he isn't used to. That's why he's hard at work at the moment. I see. Would you mind would you mind doing me a favor? Oh, what do you need? Could you give my contact information to him? We only connected via Bluetooth last time. So Oh! An email address and phone number are written on it, belonging to Riona Sharon. Sharon. Alright. Chat, do not let me forget this one. It sounds important. <laughs> What I said a few days ago may have been a bit overwhelming. It's possible that I spoke more than was necessary. All because I couldn't help but feel a pang of bitterness knowing what happened to the tree. It's entirely understandable, though. But it's not my intention to interfere with his work. As such, if he requires my assistance, please, do let me know. It's the least I could do, as I realized there would be plenty of difficulty obtaining information. Oh, I mean, because Officer Georgie is human, and we semi-physical beings have our own way of sharing information, as such. I understand what you mean. Okay. Just do not wish to kill. I just do not wish to incriminate anything or anyone. It's fine, I get it. I'm glad. Oh. I'd say you've already helped him out in more ways than one. Hmm? Sorry, did you say something? I was zoning out a little. No, nothing. I'll pass this off to him. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bad traffic aside, how are you? Uh, I'm... To be honest, I've had a lot on my mind of late, and I don't know how to express it without sounding pathetic. You know I'm all ears. That may actually be part of the problem, I'm afraid. P pardon? You know, I've had conversations with more individuals over the past week than I have in the past few years. Is that a good or a bad thing? It's troubling. Oh, oh, I'm sorry about that. I don't mean it's necessarily in a negative way. It's just, I used to believe that I had to be, I had a settled life objective. But I have been doubting it really lately. How come? I finally heard back from Miss Rachel yesterday. Oh, any good news? No. Our fields are admittedly quite different, so I was not expecting much. However, she provided me with some contacts who may be of assistance. Even though they had no direct connection to the audience I'm trying to reach. I see. She explained clearly why she thinks I should contact them, however. Which I'm thankful for. That's very thoughtful of her. So, what's the battle plan? And why are you doubting yourself? In essence, the advice is to slowly increase my network, to make myself known. Oh. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? You can probably guess my concern about it. I think so, but could you give me a, re a refresher? Just so I don't misunderstand. I feel like that would be a shortcut, so to speak. Right? She did, however, remind me of an important and humbling fact. What would that be? Well... Oh, but it's not guaranteed you'll get anything out of it, don't you think? Unless you're really, really sure the so-called shortcut is 100% gonna work. Because you'll have to do way, way more than just making a few calls and waiting for callbacks, you know. I'd say that's a decent impression of her. Thank you. After that, she told me a story about her early career experiences, both the good and bad. Getting noticed is truly only the beginning. Then it's either a matter of letting your talent speak for you, or you get out there to develop connections with the right people. Even then, there's still no guarantee of success. After listening to her explanation, I respected Miss Rachel's determination. I can certainly see how it worked out for her. But then I was left wondering whether Mr. Mr. Lucas meant something similar to during our first meeting. Right, I thought it all sounded familiar. Will you try her suggestion then? I don't know. Is it difficult? No more difficult than spending reels to 
been sending reels to every audition I've come across and being rejected by every single one. But for some reason I feel, I feel conflicted about it. Speaking of Mr. Lucas, he and I have also continued our correspondence. Although perhaps it was a bit more like necessity. Uh, did something happen? He was stuck? Pardon? Actually, he posted about it on social media last night. Oh, hmm, I might have seen it. Did you? I came across it when I was updating my schedule to be re and responding and responded out of concern. Then he called me almost immediately. He was loud. All sounds in order. And extremely drunk. Really? He denied it at first. But it was too obvious not to notice. He told me he was walking aimlessly deep in thought and entered Cary Park without realizing he had done so. Must have been some deep thinking if he was doing he was doing, because I think it rained pretty hard last night. Well, I wouldn't know. The bus to and from there is currently not operating after 10 p.m. Which is why I sent him a message informing him of that fact, as he seemed un to be unaware of it. Right? So he called me to ask if there was any other mode of public transit nearby. Wouldn't it have been easier for him to just call a cab? He told me he wanted to know the city better. At midnight? Why not? After all, you operate your business after dark yourself. Touché. Perhaps he just didn't want to go home yet? And I might be mistaken here, but I thought he doesn't like drinking. Wasn't it... Wasn't it... Uh, oh, wasn't it partying? Nevertheless, I think last night was quite different. It appears he had dinner with his team, and he needed the extra courage in order to negotiate with them about his proposed new direction. Ah. I see. I suppose it didn't go as expected. Perhaps. And I know that feeling to all too well. Miss. However, he said he will keep negotiating until they reach a compromise. That's good. Is it, though? Miss Rachel told me about the hoops she had to jump through in the beginning of her career with her teammates as well. Likewise, Mr. Lucas has to her work hard to obtain approval from his teams for his action. I just... How can they still be so positive? What do you mean? I just can't picture myself convincing others to give me a chance like that. I'm almost wanted, I almost wanted to ask... Why do we have to be at the mercy of others in order to succeed or fail? Can't talent speak for itself? But, if I truly believe that, with the number of rejections I have received so far, I should have stopped a long time ago, shouldn't I? Right, that's why it doesn't work that way. What do you mean? To let talent speak for itself, we would all have to have the same standards. I see what you mean. Art would cease to be art if it were standardized, wouldn't it? However, doesn't that imply everything still depends on the whims of the individual judging you at the moment? How does someone like Miss Rachel or Mr. Lucas manage to be fine with that? Hmm, perhaps because they don't see it as be-all and end-all. What do you mean? Rather than viewing them as judges with the authority to determine their fates, perhaps they simply see them as hills to either overcome or avoid? If that makes sense. Just a matter of perspective as to where the power lies. But it's not easy to climb those hills, especially if you've never done it before. Therefore, oh, therefore it's good to try and find out what works for you, or ask for guidance or assistance even. Because no one can possibly know every single way to overcome obstacles. Or be able to safely recognize warning signs without first learning about them from others. Is that what you're trying to say? I see. Still. Miss Riona? Oh, yes. Sorry, I got a bit lost in my thoughts. You're fine, I promise. But speaking of Mr. Lucas, what happened to him after the call? I picked him up and drove him home. Oh, whoa. Oh. But I thought you were located in Bellevue. I am. But I still had unfinished business in the downtown area. Moreover, he suddenly began singing quite loud nearing, nearing the end of our call. Which led me to conclude it would be best for me to go and fetch him. I see. How was his singing, in your opinion? Uh, um, it wasn't too bad. 
If not for the fact that he was screaming most of the lyrics, that is. Well, his hoodie was soaked when I arrived, so he had to take it off before getting into the car. Thankfully, the water did not completely soak through his shirt, so he remained relatively dry. However, I still had to lay down the seat covers at, as his fur got rather wet. Oh, I hope he didn't get sick then. I should go and help. Alright, will you be okay? I'm... I have a lot to think about. Thank you for being patient with my concerns, Nixie. No problem at all, anytime. Have a good evening then, Nixie. Come back again soon. Whew. Dang, Lucas, going out and getting drunk? What the heck are you doing, bro? No wonder we didn't see him today or the yesterdays. They're probably hung over. If not sick. Because of downpours. What? It's been raining every day. I think it rained every day in the last game too, but still. How's chat doing? How are you guys doing? You enjoying all this? Having fun with all of the dialogue? Hopefully my voices are okay. Probably not the best, but at least they're okay. Alien sightings increase. Is this an invasion? At least it's pretty. Researcher responds over allegedly algae invasion. <laughs> Dwarfaria? Tech teams up with Golmex Industries to produce self-healing concrete technology. We haven't seen, uh, that reminds me. Uh, I don't, because it said, like, tech teams, it reminded me. Uh, we haven't seen Aqua and Myrtle in a bit. So maybe we'll see them today. That looks like Bailey's. Hey, yeah. Um. Shit. Hey, Bailey's. I don't know what's going on. Are we zoned out? We appear to be zoned out. Ah, uh, water. Water, 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 water. I'm surprised I got away without Fido drowning me today. Or Mer. Knock knock, anyone there? Mr. Bailey's, hi. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you come in. How are you tonight? I'm alright. But you look pretty distracted. A penny for your thoughts? Oh, you can have them for free. Oh, Toskal, are you making up for them not sending water my way? There you helped. <laughs> ah, thank you for the hydrate. I feel refreshed. <laughs> I was just pondering at the hidden side of things. How different the world is under the surface compared to what we think it is. Nothing and no one is exactly what they appear to be. Funny, I was having similar thoughts on my own, my own way here. I guess now that we spend so much time on social media, people believe we can be summed up in a picture or a sentence. But it's not like that. It's not as easy to know someone. Even if that someone is yourself. Especially if that someone is yourself. <laughs> Sounds like we agree on this. We sure do. And it's been on my mind a lot the past few days. Does that have anything to do with your wedding to Miss Lua? Got it in one. How are things going on that front? Hmm. A few days ago we decided to take some time apart to think. That sounds ominous. No, I don't mean it like that. It wasn't a breakup or even a break. Whew! We've been through so much, there's no walking back on our relationship now. But sometimes you're so, you're so together that you lose sight of a big picture, you know? I think I see what you mean. So we decided to give each other a bit of space, and figure out what we really want out of our wedding. And more importantly, out of our marriage. I see, have you made any progress on that front? Do you want the short version or the long version? I'm always here for the full story. Then I'm going to tell you everything. 
but I think I should order first. Sure thing, what can I make you tonight? I'm not feeling fuzzy. Anything warm would do. So, anything, really. Makes sense. What about some herbal tea, then? Hibiscus, butterfly pea? Butterfly pea or hibiscus sounds great. With milk and honey, please. Mm. Tea, milk, honey. I like the blue ones. <sighs> Dreaming blue. He likes latte art, right? Let me see if I can do this. I messed it up last time I tried this, so. Let's see. Hang on. Reset. Uh, let me see. Okay. Now, if we itch, should be able to, like. The itch does not give you a lot of, like, movement here. You kind of have to, like. give me a lot to work with. Um, I know like the typical one is like to spread it over like this. Whoa. I guess with the way it's pouring you would do it like this. But the edge makes it so hard. It just doesn't do the... You can't like... You have to like tug numerous times to make it do anything. Let me think. Let's do a big one. Maybe I can do it if I do it this way. I like how it came out like that anyway. <laughs> it looks pretty. Um, I think the technique would be to like make it a it's not too bad. I've never been a actual barista, but that actually doesn't look bad. It kind of looks like a feather. It's pretty. I like it. I'm gonna call it. I think that's pretty. <laughs> I'm literally there. <laughs> uh, I think the only thing I have right now is uh, information from. Okay. Well, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> There you go. Hope you like it. Thanks, Nixie. This is nice and brings me way back. You know, I'm not that really in touch with my family anymore. Yes? I'm sorry about that. Don't be. I don't even miss them. Most of the time. In the end, they're just a random bunch of people. And we don't have to have very much in common. It's good that you've learned about yourself, Mr. Bailey's. I think so, too. There's just one person I miss. But I've been missing her for a while now. Ah, someone who passed away, I'm guessing? Exactly. Spot on again, Nixie. I used to have a very close relationship with my great-great-aunt. When I was little, my parents fought all the way to all the time. I still remember in my bones that how that made me feel. The fear that one of them or both of them would walk away and abandon me. A bit ironic in hindsight, but then it was many years ago. Yes, it's quite normal for a little child to care about their parents. No matter who they are or how they behave. That's true. Anyway, I spent most of, almost all of my even, evenings curled up into a ball in my room, trying hard not to listen to all the shouting, except when my gran came to visit. Not that her being around prevented the fighting, mind you. Elven high society is amazing at keeping up appearances, except in front of family. But she got how it made me feel. So she went out of her way to take the sting out of it. She would keep me company and bring me a cup of herbal tea with milk and honey in it. Drink this now, drinking this now with you feels a lot like family again. Aww, that's sweet. Sounds like she was a perceptive person. She truly was the best of them until she got sick. Oh no, how did that happen? I thought elves don't get sick. I see, that's the part of elven mis disinformation. Elves don't get sick with your little run-of-the-mill colds, but they do get big bad diseases like everyone else. And it's not uncommon for us to die from them. Except for, except there's this assumption in Elven society that if you live the right sort of life, you'll pass away peacefully in your bed. So that's what families say most of the time when someone dies. 
Incidentally, that also means that they need to pretend everything is fine until the very last moment. So that's what they did to my aunt. They basically shut her in... Shut her in during her last few weeks. That sounds really awful. I did manage to visit her and she put on a brave face, but it was clear she wasn't happy. But then she wasn't very happy before that either. At least she had you. Must have been a little isolate, a little consolation, but yes, I'm glad I was able to be with her. <sighs> to think I came very close to being trapped with those people. Pretty sure she would have hated that for me. A little part of me hopes she'd be proud of me right now. I'm certain she would be. Thanks, Nixie. Here you are letting me blab on again. That's more than fine, but do you think growing up among conflict might explain why things are, well, a bit difficult to work out sometimes between you and Lua? I definitely think that's part of it. In fact... Silver! Are you here to offer some sagely advice? Oh, hi, Amanda. Hi, Nixie. And hi, I don't think we've met before, so I'm Silver. And Bailey's, nice to meet you. I'm guessing you're a man. We are, but you do not appear to be a hive. How did you? Lua told me she ran into you a few, we a few weeks or so ago. Oh, the pr I mean, the nice earthling we met on our first night here. That is a satisfactory explanation. And so, are you her date? I'm a little more than that. I'm her fiance. Truly? Fiance is a... Fiance is a successful outcome of dates with a... 0 0.0313... P? I'm assuming percent? Probability. Congratulations on your excellent odds actualization. Thank you. Now, Cafe Offspring. Cafe Offspring? <laughs> we are wishing for a drink. Cafe Offspring? How did you acquire that new title? <laughs> Alright, sounds like something I shouldn't prod too hard. Never mind me. You were about to order, Ma Amanda? We were. And what we wish for is memorable parting experience. Ah, I suspected something like that. Last visit in a while, huh? That is accurate. I take it you've completed your research on Earth. Almost. We are quite satisfied with the outcome of our missions. Interesting. That sounds like there is a story there. But first tell me, what sort of experience are you after? We wish to have something we will never have, we have never had before. It's time to get creative then. Yes, take care not to reuse any ingredients you have served us in the past. Oh no! Ah! What have I never served her? Oh no. Oh no. Ah! Okay. I have no freaking clue what I've served. Hey, Benny, how's it going? I call it tea with marshmallow. Yeah, this is a toughie. Um, I probably haven't served them hibiscus. Let's see if we can find. I could do a pink spice. Could also do this. Honey would be a little s would be up in the air if I've used it before or not. Like certain ingredients are very particular, and you know you're gonna use a lot of like cinnamon and honey in this game. With uh, mint, lemon, and ginger being the ones that kind of sporadically come in. So, and milk. Milk's a problem. Um. I haven't actually made the Milky Way, have I? But it still uses milk, and I feel confident that we probably have made something with milk. Ah! How many times has Amanda been here? Uh, green tea is probably a good option because we probably didn't give them green tea at any point. Um. Should I just make cough syrup? What is it? Honey and lemon? Or is it honey and mint? 
What does this do? Painting mint. Just a regular drink. Anyway, how's it going, Benny? How you doing? How's your kick coming along? I don't know if I've ever made the chocolate. What's this? I'm just checking things now. <laughs> Benny is eh, but okay. Why is Benny eh? Spiced lady! I kind of want to give it to her. Look at that, it's all fancy. I don't think I've made this one before. Sure, I'll give them that one. I, I can't, I'm not gonna remember what I've given them over the past like three weeks. So why is Benny eh? Here you go, hopefully this tastes new to you. It does. It is at least 56.941 different from anything we all else we have experienced. We are as Earthlings would express, delighted. I guess I did good. According to our calculations, this is our 39,846th new experience since arriving on Earth. That's quite a lot. Perhaps, however, most of them were rather insignificant in nature. Oh, what about this one? This one is the 99th percentile of significance. Is that a good or bad? She means it's very significant. Right, Amanda? Very much so. We enjoyed this place, and we will. Miss it. That's... Benny has a lot on his mind. Oh, sorry. Hopefully it's not, like, anything too bad. Maybe you'll get better. I'd be willing to listen if you wish to share. But don't feel pressured. <coughs> Don't mind me, getting a bit emotional here. Anyhow, I trust the agent gave you no, no more trouble? Uh, that one was quite close, actually. We had a little brush with the authorities, you see. Yeah, Lua mentioned that. She made her really ang- He made her really angry. She was still seething when she came home that night. Uh, please tell her I'm grateful for that. Well, that agent kept looking into things even after his second visit here. The scariest thing is when he came by to my cafe. Or what he thought was my cafe. I really feared he was onto us, but apparently he just enjoyed the chat we had there the other night. Or that's what he said anyway. I don't know if that's true, but he was so. But when he saw the cafe wasn't open yet, he ended up leaving and hasn't shown up since. That's a relief. Yes, we have thought on it for a while, and oh, we completed Silver's good ar story arc. Yay! We did it! Did I watch the Nintendo Direct? Yes, I did. We have decided that we do not care for that sort of excitement. Yeah, that's fair, Amanda. Not if it makes our siblings so sad. You've really gotten the hang of emotions now, haven't you, Amanda? Thank you, offspring. If that is the case, we are content. That makes our mission well and truly accomplished. Did you come here specifically to pick up Earthling emotions? No, we came here for the purpose of general Earthling research. But it appears to us now that emotions are one of its most interesting aspects. How was it? Uh, there's some cool stuff they mentioned. Uh, the Mario and Luigi game looked fun. I am most definitely excited about, uh, heck, I don't even remember the game. I just know it's Tokyo Games and I love everything by Tokyo Games. <laughs> so that's what I'm excited about. I'm served. I played all of the Danganronpas, I played Rain Code, I've watched, uh, what was the, Akudama Drive. <laughs> if it's by Tokyo Games, I will absorb that piece of media. <laughs> I love it. It's great. And the art style is so distinct, I love it. You can always pick them and pick them out. We'll be submitting a, you call it, academic paper. Uncontrolled stimuli and reflexive neutral pa neural patterns. Deep level communication in hive versus non hive species. Wow. That's how you know it's serious research. I don't even understand the title. Amanda always wa that was the brains of the family. That wasn't your only mission, though, Amanda, right? If you're leaving, does that mean. Yes. Pearl and I did go out on a date. Right, you're looking for love, aren't you? 
I am. I was. I think. I think I may have found it. Wait, wasn't the first date really a short time ago? Just a couple of days. But I've been waiting a while, and I really think this is it. When I took up this mission from the Hive, when I came to Earth, and during this entire process when I changed and changed, what I was hoping was that someone would see me for who I am. And I really think she does. That's so great, but I'm curious. Doesn't being in a hive provide that experience of feeling seen? It does, and it does not. And in fact, we hope that that is something our research might improve. What were you say? Uh, did you say anything you were excited about, Fox? In the Nintendo Direct? The hive sees thoughts and desires honestly, but it's not able to communicate the reasons for those desires. The emotions, as it were. We do not dwell on those, nor are we to, nor will we start to do so in excess. But it seems to us now that they may be worth conveying, at least to some extent. Yes, that's what Amanda was said as is a part of it. Eh. It was very unaware of my emotions when I first came to Earth, and it was really bad at communicating them clearly to others. In some ways, I still am. It'll always be harder for me to grasp them than for most people. But when I started to understand them, I was both fascinated and scared. Which is not an uncommon experience, I think. It's really not. It requires a good deal of courage to look at your emotion honestly. It certainly quite requires some time. And even more time to find someone who can look at them with you. Not get scared and take them as they are. Someone who can see you clearly and kindly. It's a precious thing when that happens, huh? And a rare and beautiful thing. Has that been your experience with Lua? It definitely has. I almost forgot how much it mattered, too. I'm lucky that I have a good friend who reminded me of that. So does that mean you and Lua found some answers? Oh, the heck with it. I can't hold my tongue any longer. Sorry to interrupt your goodbyes, you guys, but... Nixie, I'd like to officially invite you to a little surprise ceremony. Look at it! <laughs> Amanda's getting excited! Which will take place three days in hence. Well, that's some answers indeed. Yes. Taking a little time to think it really cleared our heads. We've gotten bogged down in the details. And our own insecurities, to be honest. So we decided to make it simple again. No fuss, no massive expense, nothing like that. And us, just us and our closest family members. Whether we got them at birth or chose them ourselves. I am very touched, Mr. Bailey's. Ah, oh, come on, Nixie. You know me... You know you mean a lot to the two of us, as this as does this place. Speaking of which, I also have Hyde's invitation here. Oh god, you're giving me something else to remember! No! <laughs> well, Hyde and Gala's invitation, saying how that's his obvious plus one. Would you give it to them when you see them? It'd be an honor. Silver and Amanda, I don't have a card for you, but... You're in the cafe family as well, so I'm sure Lua won't mind. Would you like to join us for the party? A party? This is our first experience being invited to a party. It is 99.999 pleasant, percent pleasant, and 0 .001 disappointing that we have to refuse. Yes, I truly appreciate the offer, Bailey's, but sadly we're leaving Seattle tomorrow. Really? That's more sudden than I expected. Are you going back to space then, Amanda? Not yet. We are going on an adventure. That sounds exciting. It really is. Amanda and I are taking a trip through the country. And maybe even a bit further if we got time. We're basically going to be tourists. Tourist is such a fascinating concept. Although our sibling explained it to us multiple times, we still find it very hard to comp comprehend. We always thought that traveling must have, must have a mission, a purpose. But it seems that tourism is traveling with no other purpose than traveling. Which is, in essence, circular reasoning. <laughs> Maybe it may well be, but it's still a lot of fun. In fact, I'd say that the real purpose of tourism is to have fun, to relax, to see beautiful things, to enjoy life, you know? Enjoyment as a purpose. That is new to us, but we are 99.999% excited to try it out. And so am I. Never been out of Seattle since I arrived. Guess I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to blend in. That I would have, have to restart everything from scratch. But knowing you're here, Nixie, 
That always has a place. That I always have a place to return to where I feel home. Well, that makes me feel a lot less nervous. That's... I'm very happy to hear that. Hi, Dad! <laughs> Benny, did you watch the Nintendo Direct? Was there anything interesting on it for you? I think I should order a drink. Of course! What can I make you? I'd like it to reflect the spirit of our upcoming adventure. But I'm also in the mood for something sweet and soothing. So sweet and soothing, but with an adventurous kick. Yes, that's exactly right. Then how about hot chocolate with something extra to make it fun? I'd love that. Hot chocolate with some sweetness and some spice would be amazing. Wait! I just made that! That's the same thing I just gave Amanda! The Spice Lady! <laughs> Here you go. I hope you like it. It's not quite there. Oh, what, really? But oh, never mind. I'm excited. I can barely taste anything anyway. Darn. What was it supposed to be? He said spite. He said sweet. Wait, but everyone says cinnamon is sweet. Uh. What did I miss? Soothing should have been milk, right? And then... I don't know. I don't know what that one was supposed to be. I can imagine. Uh, I can imagine a first trip across the country is a big deal. It is, but that's also not the only reason I'm excited. Okay, that was quite the dramatic pause. I really want to know what you're going on, going to say now. You guys seem to lead very interesting lives. Oh, not at all. I think I'm quite boring. Uh, quite a boring person. With a secret society and an alien background. It's true that some of my life circumstances are a bit unusual. But this particular thing is, a com is very commonplace. I, um... Our sibling is excited because his date will be joining us. And in fact, we must be fair and acknowledge that we may have misjudged her based on her lack of facial symmetry. Although Pearl's features are 9.231% different from left to right. We agree with her movie analysis 99.999%. Wow. Hold on. Amanda, have you met Pearl? And you talked about movies? And now she's joining you two on a holiday. How did any of that happen? We watched Orc Westerns all, to uh, all together last night. Pearl likes them a lot as well. You don't exactly sound thrilled. I... Fortunately, she also likes space travel up on us. I see. Learning couple compromises the hard way. Learning couple compromises the hard way? Okay. That was a weird sentence. Choco honey ginger? Choco honey ginger. Was that the right thing? Okay. Uh. I don't know if it lets me jump back. Let me be a time traveler. That's what I'm supposed to be able to do. We'll do it some other time. I suppose so. Well, I'm glad to hear that she's met Amanda and that they got along. Doesn't that mean she also knows where you're from, Silver? She does. In fact, I told her about that on our first date. On the first date? Wow, that's very brave. It's hard to put yourself out there under any circumstances. To reveal something so vulnerable to someone you just met and are starting to like. It takes guts. You're very kind, but I don't think so. To be honest, I hadn't planned it that way. I thought I had always felt safe here, with all the regulars. I know that not everyone would. Open-minded about me. <laughs> Aqua, who is like... Uh, I told you guys to call the cops after the first time he came in here and said he'd be breeding with people. <laughs> and so I wasn't sure to say anything to Pearl that night. But as we were talking, I was so happy to learn more about her, about who she is, and I really, and I realized that I didn't want her to have an incom incomplete picture of me. My past is part of me. If my goal is to find someone who sees me for who I am, then she needs to know about that too. And in the end, that was the right decision. All right. 
Well, I will say if she uh, if she'd heard your story and that changed how she viewed you, then she wouldn't have been worth your time anyway. That's fair. But still, even knowing that, I admire you a lot. The truth is, and this is a bit strange to, thing to say, but I think I'm proud of who I've become. And I want to I want the people I love to be proud of me too. What is proud? Proud is hmm. For yourself, I think it's when you start to be satisfied with what you're achieving. Especially if you have to fight to get there. And for others, it's when you think of someone you care about. Consider who they are and the way they're acting. And it just fills you with joy. Ah, we see. Then we are definitely proud of you. I... <laughs> You two are getting really sweet family. And so are you and Miss Lua, Mr. Bailey's. <laughs> True, chosen families can also rock. Yes. When we heard when we met Pearl, we came to a conclusion. There was no difference in nature or expression between a family that you were born with and a family that you acquire by choice. Both demand work and understanding. There may be minute differences in the specific process, but the bonds appear to be 99.999% similar, similar in the end. So it is. Uh, this game, it takes so much out of me. <laughs> it's good though, I like it. Well, we should probably get going. Yes, we must. Go pack. First time I see someone get, get excited about that specific part. What Amanda really means is that I must pack. <laughs> While she analyzes the earthly ritual of folding shirts, rolling up socks, and so on. Precisely. This is further information for our research. We are thrilled. Good luck, Silver. Indeed. Do enjoy your trip, both of you. I hope you'll tell us about it when you get back, Silver. I will. Good night to you too, then. Hasta la vista, strangers. Huh? Poor westerns. <laughs> Bye to you too. This game will put you to sleep. It's got some pretty chill music. I really like it. But the dialogue is really good. I like it. <laughs> There's never a dull moment in your cafe, Nixie. I try. Speaking of which, would you like to hold some party or after party for your wedding here? I know it's not a very large space, but perhaps <laughs> whether we'd like it. We'd love it. Honestly, I didn't want to impose, but there's no place that could be better fit. And I don't mind that it's not very large. It's going to be a small, cozy wedding. So this is perfect. It's settled then. Ah, Lua's going to be over the moon when I tell her. In fact, I'm going to go and tell her now. That's a very exciting prospect. It really is. Thanks again, Nixie. You're like a garden guardian angel for us. And on that note, I'm off. Good night. Bye, Bailey's. My boys. <clears throat> All right, when's Digimon movie night? I thought you were gonna do a movie night when you started streaming. guardian hive mind. Good night, Mr. Bailey's. Oh, that water felt good on my throat. <laughs> you will, but you still need a few things. You'll get there. I think I already asked this, but, um... <clears throat> Are you going to be live camera, or are you going to be using a model? Or a PNG tuber? Model? Cool! I do think I asked that, I just didn't remember what I got. Uh oh! Neko Mimi driver crashes truck filled with catnip, suspected DUI. PNG for now, and then VTuber novel? Model? Still cool! 
UFO previously spotted by Space Guardian and Guard Fighters, a very determined hot air balloon. <laughs> Virus vaccine booster ready for distribution. Oh, speak of Aqua. Hello, Miss Aqua. Hi, Nixie. How are you? Good as usual. How about you? Um, honestly, lots of thing ha things have happened. C can I order something first, though? Of course. What would you like? Um, can you make a cup of chai? Sure. I think. What's in chai? <laughs> I know it's cinnamon, but I don't know anything else. Is it just cinnamon cinnamon? It's probably cinnamon cinnamon. That just says cinnamon tea, so I don't think that's it. How's go? Tell me how to make the drink. We haven't seen Aqua in ages. I don't want her to be sad. I guess I can look it up real quick. It does have tea. No way. <laughs> tea, ginger, cinnamon. Okay. Cool. Tea, ginger, cinnamon. Why ginger? Make magic. Masala chai. Uh, I don't have anything to give to Aqua, right? I have... What things do I have? I have an invitation for Hyde and Gala. And I have information for Georgie. Okay. I'm doing it. I'm remembering things. Here you go. A couple of masala chai for the lady with electric taste. The lat... Electic? Electic taste. <laughs> Thank you, it's very delicious. You're welcome. So, you were saying? Oh, right. It's just, I've been busy working on my game. Ah, I see, how's it going? Pretty difficult, but I'll manage. I'm glad to hear that. How's that contract you talked about the other day going? Oh, that. I rejected it, of course. There's no saving it, really. Which is a shame. I truly like their games, but with all the shady requirements they had, I could tell they looked down on us small developers. And the scary thing is, if if I hadn't known what I know now, just because they were a publisher I love... Wait, hang on. Did I miss something? If I hadn't known what I know now, question mark. Okay. Just because they were a publisher I loved a lot, I, I would have overlooked all that. That's understandable, though. You trusted them not to take advantage of you. Well, it has to be fair for both of us, right? Because at the end of the day, it's business. But, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, I tried negotiating with them, because I was wondering if they still had any good faith left. Don't tell Myrtle, okay? <laughs> okay. But as I suspected, it really didn't go anywhere. Instead, they insisted they were doing me a favor since I'm just a small developer. And I wasn't thinking rationally or in business terms. Ugh. Doesn't sound like good faith to me. Right? Considering the unfair conditions they're expecting me to accept, they could have at least been polite about it. I doubt they care, though. Yeah. Put aside, Myrtle's coming here soon. Great! So you two made up already? Yes. We apologize to each other. Nice! I know I was probably being a little confusing. I didn't explain the context I applied to the situation very well. But she made it clear that she understood why I was anxious. And she apologized for assuming. That really helped. Now she's helping me speed up development. I'm glad to hear that. Just kiss already? <laughs> Besides that, how was your day? Pretty good, actually. Um, I took about a half day off work. And I'm feeling pretty good today. Uh, better than the last few days. I think I'm trying to like mix around some. Di I'm trying to introduce like some new vitamins and stuff into my diet so I'm less exhausted literally all the time. <laughs> I've been super under energy the last couple of weeks and I hate that. <laughs> so I'm feeling pretty good today. Hey. Hey, Myrtle. 
We were just talking about you. Okay. Nothing too terrible, I hope. Don't worry, it's only all the good stuff. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Nixie. I won't be ordering today. Why? We don't have time. We're going to the expo sales, right? Oh, you're right. Expo sale? We're hunting new parts for my PC. It's been a bit slowly. <laughs> a bit? She's joking. It's pretty much in its death throes. <laughs> oh, there's Mer. I was wondering where you were earlier. Mermaid Mon and female Ogre Mon. Interesting couple. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. All right. If we're going, we're building you a whole new setup. But if you just want parts, I can always give you mine. But at this point, I'm not sure it'll be any help at all, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, you're right. It's time to move forward with the with the productivity. I've been putting it all off upgrade upgrading things for a while now. So it's really time for a better setup. That's the spirit. Go big or go home. <laughs> Sorry, Nixie. It seems we'll have to go now. Thanks for the drink. I'll see you later. Yeah, take care. Safe trip. Have good luck. And they're off. If I can get to where I feel like this more, uh, more regularly, I wouldn't mind actually picking up an extra stream occasionally during the week. Cause, uh, and I say that mostly because uh, I kind of, I've never played Hollow Knight and I kind of want to play Hollow Knight, <laughs> but I want to stream it. <laughs> Let's see, I guess I'll go over today's checklist. Hmm? Oh, Hendry, how's it going, bud? Oh, Gala! Order a drink so I can give you an invitation before I forget about it. Well, hello, gentlemen. Hey, Nixie. Nixie! Nice seeing you here, Andre. How goes it? Good, good, good. I see you're doing good, too. As usual. What do you want to drink, Andre? It's on me. No, 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 no. That won't do. Well, let's talk about bills later. So, what will it be? You first. You sure? Okie dokie. I'll have a STMJ, please. Ah, they do this to me every time. Uh, there it is. Milk, ginger, honey. Milk, ginger, honey. Easy. At least that one is on record. Yep. Sir. One STMJ coming up. What about you, Gala? Uh, it smells so nice. Spot on. Thanks, Nixie. You're very welcome. How about you, sir? Oh, it's my turn. Something with ginger, please. Anything else with that? Well, that would, what would you recommend? Anything from your new tea line's fine. Oh, I see you have a new selection. Yes, we have blue pea and hibiscus tea available. Hibiscus, huh? You should try it. Hey, I know that one. It's pretty good for this kind of weather. It sounds familiar. It's ginger steep with roselle buds. Another name for hibiscus. Anything else in it? That was a bit sweet. Interesting. I'll try it then. A te jahe roselia. I probably butchered that. I do have that one though. I know I made it at some point. I saw it in here earlier. Yeah, hibiscus ginger honey. Don't forget the invite, yes. I actually had a mani mini panic attack when you said that. I was like, when do I give them the invite? And then I was like, wait, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> there we go, I did it. <laughs> yes, memory. <laughs> Thanks for the recall, Tazgal. Hey, I rhymed. Oh, it's Bailey and Lua's wedding invitation. Really? For Hyde. Oh. The date's... The date is 
really soon. Could you please pass it to him once I'm not... Since I'm not sure when he'll be here. Hmm. Okay, sure. Thank you! Piping cup of Tija. Ah, I wish I knew how to pronounce it for Poya. Oh, yeah. Thanks. What do you think, Hendry? Does it look any good? Oh. It looks about right. It smells good, too. Try it. Yep, it's good. Glad I passed your impromptu test. So, what's been going on? Did I miss anything? <laughs> uh, something happened, didn't it? You could say that. I think the officer's coming, too, by the way. Alright. Yes! I can get the other one out the door before we end stream! And I don't have to worry about forgetting over a week! <laughs> as for me, I'm just glad my fury is over. Are you okay, though? I'm fine, as you can see. How are you managing, Hendry? Did you get your checkup? I did, I did. Rachel pestered me to get it done all week, so I had to do it. Good. There's no doubt I need to slow down. I can feel it in my bones. Time is, harsh mi is a harsh mistress, as they say. Ain't that the truth. I don't think you'll get to complain, though. Why not? You know my body ain't, isn't what it used to be anymore. Oh. I mean, compared to my prime. 50 years ago? <laughs> I'm kidding. Truth is, my body doesn't hold up well when I'm transforming anymore. Ah, is that so? Yep. Soreness doesn't go away as quick as it used to. It's harder to get up in the morning after all that. Like today. <laughs> I know the feeling all too well. Especially in this kind of weather. Oh? It's like my body knows if a storm's gonna get worse. The weather forecast- no weather forecast can match the accuracy of my joints. <laughs> Well, lucky for you, Ginger is great for sore muscles. Is it really? Yeah. That's Gigimon. <laughs> I like calling Gigimon Grandpa Mon. <laughs> because Gigi. <laughs> hey, folks. Man of the hour. Hey, you, Georgie. Nixie, what did I miss? This is all of my base tone, people. They're all gonna sound the same. <laughs> He's literally everyone's grandpa. <laughs> How was Tato? He was adorable? Yes, very adorable. Uh, playing Astroneer is also pretty crazy. It can get a little crazy, <laughs> especially during a collab. <laughs> but yes, very cool, very sweet, very cute. And thank you for the recommendation. Some very important weather talk. Is that so? Sounds like I missed a ton then. How are you? How am I? You're talking about my case. Well, I don't even know where to begin. Henry, you know nothing about what I'm about to say, right? No? Are we... What are we talking about? Nixie, you should have primed him before I got here. My bad. In my defense, I don't know... I didn't know you were coming until Mr. Gollum mentioned it. Excuses, excuses. I'll explain it to Henry. In short, there's been a string of car vandalisms nearby. Oh, yay, cutscene. <laughs> Cut to dark. Been thinking on your Digimon? Do you pick an existing one or make up your own? I don't know what you feel. Is there an existing Digimon that you feel fits you? That represents you? Who you are? Who you truly wish to be? There are a lot of Digimon, but is there one you feel like is your Digimon? Fido, stop flirting and chat! Fido, stop flirting and chat! <laughs> so he's trying to figure out if the trees being gone has anything to do with the case. And that's where we are now. Yep, that's about it. 
That's a lot to take in. Anything new happened since? <laughs> Why did you at me? <laughs> I'm the streamer. I'm going to assume most things you're saying are to me. Honestly, no idea. You know, Goonie Online line is your favorite. So what do you like? How about this? What do you like about the Agunim Online? Like, why is it your favorite? You can't prove that? You're just gonna keep doing it, aren't you? Well, I tried something. I set a few candles where the tree was. Oh, how'd that go? I used my lighter and things happened. Mind backing up a bit? Feels like there's a lot of context missing here. Well, I'm warning ya. Everything I'm about to tell you is real. Sound real crazy, but no, I haven't lost it yet. Got it? Loud and clear. I told Nixie about my lighter a while ago. How I'd been connected to the fairy market we talked about before. Really? In what way? The lighter was my grandpa's. And there's a chance he bought it from there. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. What a coincidence, huh? Anyways, my daughter likes this sort of mystery and stuff, right? After talking to her about what's been going on, she believed my lighter was the key to making sense of all this. And gave me some pointers. So, I went back there last night. To the spot, you know? To where the tree used to be. Lit a few candles there, put the lighter right in the middle of it all. I'll be honest, it was spooky as heck. The air was still, and I felt tension in my head. I wasn't sure if it was just me being creeped out or if there was something else going on. Whatever it was, I thought I should leave it, but I should leave it alone. So I followed my gut and got the heck out of there. Did you forget your lighter? Then what happened? It blew up. <laughs> it blew up. <laughs> what? What do you mean, what? The lighter, it just blew up. What, what do you mean it blew up? Yeah, I, I think we definitely need more context here. Well, I didn't see it because I was walking towards my car, you see. But I heard it. So, With a little whoosh followed by a couple of click click clicks. Well, besides him looking like a pure badass, he's red and fire, which is my favorite color and element. It gives us a sense of reliability, leadership, and someone you'd want to have watch your back in a fight. Something that I am not. Aw, come on, man. Who got this? That's a shitty lighter. <laughs> and a comment to follow. <laughs> Let's see. Well, like I said, your Digimon c should also represent who you want to be. So does that still count? Follow? <laughs> What kind of sound is that? You know, something small and metallic blew up. Wouldn't bang work better? No, that's a shot. Wouldn't want to confuse all with that. But Patho- are y'all really describing the, the- trying to figure out the intricacy of the sound it made? What is that? You know, Patho! And then what happened? Right, okay. Then I immediately looked back and seen it had fallen over with its lid open. The flame, it was burning white. Wow. Ain't gonna lie to y'all, I freaked the frick out. But before I could do anything, two small figure figures emerged from the corner walking toward the lighter. Did they see you? Yeah, they did. They inspected my lighter while I was just standing there. Then they asked me straight up, Is this lighter yours, guy? I said, yeah. Then I fired a question back. Are you the ones that have been messing with cars around here lately? They said yes. Oh, okay. Well, sounds like case closed. So they weren't ghosts? Hell no. Nah. Thank God for that. Then who are they? Depends on the story. I think that's only used. Depends on the story, I think that is only used in survive. I mean, I really. 
In my mind, that's just how, what a Digimon represents. It's you, but it's also who you want to be. Ed, I know, I saw we. I think that was the only... Uh, uh, I don't know. I like the aspect of it, of a Digimon representing who you are and uh, what you want to be. I mean, if you think about the Digidestin from uh, Digimon Adventure and Adventure 2 and Tamers, all their Digimon kind of resembled them in some way, shape, or form. Well, Tamers less so, because you had, like, Baby Gilmon with... I mean, Takata was pretty carefree. Henry was the serious one with uh, Momentai uh, Terriermon, but I don't know. Maybe Henry wanted to relax a bit. <laughs> They got along well enough. I don't know. My opinion. Back. Gosh, Twitch does not tell me accurately when the ads go away. That's so rude. Basically, all I was saying is, uh... Even if it was just used in Survive, I still like the aspect of it, that a Digimon represents your personality or what you strive to be. I think that's a really cool aspect, and though it's not like consistent across all of the formats, you can still see some similar similarities. I will get my words out eventually. <laughs> Between Tamer and Digis. It's great. I like it. I like the aspect. And of course, no two Digimon are just alike, so they're not all going to have the same personality anyway. That's what makes it wonderful. <laughs> Let's just say they were close friends of the deceased. They're part of the fairy folk, but I didn't expect them at all. Didn't expect... Do you know them? Kinda. In fact, they own the gnome noms near my place. Oh, wow. True, but you don't know if it's right for you to just take Takuya's stuff. So, are you not wanting to call a Goonimon yours because it's someone else's? Because I would be like, eh, don't worry about it. <laughs> So, if a Goonimon wasn't attached to anyone else, would you pick him up in a heartbeat and be like, this is my Digimon? Yep. You like trains? There is a train Digimon. <laughs> then go for it, dude. If you like the design, it's fine. <laughs> That one is yours then? That's, that sounds about right for you. <laughs> but yeah! Still think Kunimon or Mermaidmon fits you? And I will avidly say Dorumon is my guy, is my bubble. It's my boy. My, 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 mine. Mine. I will get words out. <laughs> I like my little fox dinosaur. It is the best. <laughs> and it becomes a dragon! A big mech dragon. And it is the best. I like it. And my voice is cutting out. Ah, water! Ah, a little bit better? Alright, I need to get through this, uh, this discussion. Because it's already eight. <laughs> this is fun, though. Did they know it was your car then? Nope, because I only order a takeout. And I actually, I usually walk there. What was the reason for all the vandalism then? All started because of a broken promise. And we have to start way back for that. Oh no. You remember why the tree was there in the first place, right? Yeah. Traffic hit and run. At the time, the court ruled practically letting the driver off the hook outside of the DUI charge. Well, it sparked a huge protest. Good. 
In response to it, the mayor at the time gave his word to the victim's family. He promised to keep the tree as a landmark for the community. And the vow was kept well after his tenure was over. But he died a few years ago. And we all know recently what happened to the tree. I see. So it was under their attempt to keep the memory alive. Not just for their friend, but for, as a remembrance of the injustice as well. And after all the urban renewals this city's gone through, it makes sense that the community that used to be there is gone by now. That's right. There used to be a lot of veteran houses, veteran housing and low-rise apartments in the area. Now it's filled with never-ending projects. You okay? Oh, yeah. Sorry. There's something about it that bothers me a bit. Like what? Their unique disposition after they pass. It bothers me that their own memories are insufficient to endure their existence. And by failing to remember, we, the outside party, will also gradually lose track of their existence. It just doesn't feel right to me. I get what you mean. An odd erasure of existence. But apparently that's why they keep animals. The Nom Noms. Owner told me they have a large mastiff living in their place. Others even take care of multiple animals at once. Interesting. I suppose that's why some folk prefer living near the wilderness. But animals don't live long either. Right. But the erasure part starts happening if they're completely forgotten, right? Something like that, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> right, okay. But it doesn't normally happen anyway. How do we pay respect to remember someone who died a long time ago? Like our ancestors, for example. It's our call, isn't it? Hmm. Every April, Rachel and I visit my wife's grave. We used to visit her grandparents' grave, too, when my wife was still alive. If our extended family was visiting, they'd join us. We'd clean their gravestones, bring food, and have a feast while catching up. It's how Nickel Mimi's honor the dead, and I'm sure other cultures have their own ways, too. Right? I truly think continuing the tradition is something we do for ourselves, though. To remember the deceased and all the reasons they matter to us. So, except for the weird erased, mem erased memory part, it sounds like on par to me. It's the effort of the living to remember the dead, anyway. You're right. Unless you believe the li in life after death, memories are for us, not for the dead. Exactly. be great if we could all remember and help each other, because keeping track of any sort of history is a team effort, since the best way to gain wisdom is to learn from the past whether it's bad or good. Yeah. Speaking of the Gnome Noms owner, though, what happened to them after all that? Alright, did you arrest them? Nope. Huh? Are you gonna let them go? Not necessarily. But I got an idea of what I go on what I have to do. Right now, I'm just happy there's no ghosts involved. Still, it was truly something else. Yeah, what a night it must have been. It is what it is. But your lighter still blew up! What's up, big guy? Something on your mind? No, nothing. A shame about that lighter of yours, though. Oh yeah, it's probably busted, right? That's the thing. It works just fine, not even a scratch. Really? But that thing blew up, didn't it? Like, pathow! Heck, we even debated the sound effects and everything. As I said, it still works fine. So don't worry. So, I don't know what else to tell you. I see. You guys are killing my voice. <laughs> you don't want to know what I think? No. <laughs> it's haunted. No, it's not. That thing is definitely haunted. What are you talking about? The white flame bit is unnatural, I agree. And I remember how you kept forgetting your lighter here. Hey now. A man is allowed to forget stuff as he gets older, no? As for the blowing up, it was probably a well-timed bad chemical reaction or something. This thing is real old, after all. If that's the case, you might want to stop carrying it around. At any rate, I believe you now, officer. There's no such thing as coincidence, indeed. Got someone to raid? Sure, let me have it. I still think it's a ghost, though. Shut it, Hendry. Shh. In any case, mystery solved. For now, at least. Hmm. Oh no, I think I have to go now. 
Didn't realize I've missed multiple messages earlier because I was so engrossed in our story. Sorry to rush off. I'll see you all again next time. Sure, safe trip. Nice seeing you again, Hendry. Take care. Ishnai? Sure, sounds cool. Let me move over there. You know, all that talking made me thirsty. You want anything? I'm good. Then one espresso for me, please. <gasps> coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> espresso! Okay, let me give him the thing. There we go. Proceed. And serve. What is it? It's Miss Riona's number. She asked me to give it to you. She said she can help you find someone if you need it. Or if you need any information from her. I see. Well, I'm sure it'll come in handy. Thank you. Here's your espresso officer. Thanks. Great as always. So what's next, officer? What's your plan after this? Other than talking to him? Guess I'll focus on the rumors. Word is going around that cars are being messed up there. That's kind of expected, though, isn't it? There's no point in adding the citizens' worry, Addison, ad, adding citizens' worries when the case is pretty much over. And I don't want pa bad press to paint over the area's history. You're right. There's nothing like rumors without being stopped. There's nothing like rumors without being stopped. They'll just spiral out of control. Time to leave, I guess. Duty calls? Something like that. I suppose I'll do the same. It's quite late after all. Thanks for listening to us, Nixie. Old men ramble. Pleasure's all mine. <laughs> I'll take care and see you later, yeah? Have a good night, Nixie. Safe trip, you two. Ah! <laughs> Oh, thank God. The day is over. <coughs> oh, sorry. Alright. Let's get a raid set up for Ishna. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Vegan food on the rise. Gnome diet popular amongst young adults. Box office movie High Weapon. Hits astonishing 2 billion worldwide. What Generation Z really wants? An independent survey. I don't know about that. Okay. We're gonna save. And we will pick this up next time. I'm gonna go ahead and swap to end screen. Another thing. I even need... Even if I do pick a Digimon, need to think on the line. Well, if you're worried about the line, you could just create something original. Then you'll just have an entire original line. It's up to you. It can still be Firebase, too. Anywho, let me get this raid set up. Thank you guys for coming by and putting up with my low energy these last couple of weeks. I'm hoping.